Here's another way in which we can use the PV equals NRT equation, the ideal gas equation. And so here we have a situation where we have, let's say, a tire that contains air. And the initial conditions for the pressure, the volume, and the temperature are that the pressure was 40 pounds per square inch, and we assume that to be the gauge pressure. The volume of the tire was 48 liters, and the temperature of the air inside the tire 25 degrees centigrade. After we drive the, the car for a while, the new volume and temperature are now 49 liters, so the, temperature, the tire expands a little bit, and the new temperature now is at 80 degrees centigrade. So what will now be the final pressure, pressure 2? So the way this works with the ideal gas equation is that we realize that the number of moles and the constant R do not change, but pressure, volume, and temperature all do change, so we're going to move pressure, volume, and temperature over to one side of the equation, so we're going to write this as PV over T equals NR, and of course N and R, those are constants, so that means that the ratio of pressure times volume divided by temperature remains constant, which also means that P1 V1 over T1 must equal P2 V2 over T2. And regardless of the condition, regardless of the question, even if you want to you know, pull out Boyle's law or Amanthan's law or anything like that separately, if you do any problem like this, this will always work no matter what. So if you forget what Boyle's law was, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and pull out your ideal gas equation, determine what's constant, determine what's not, move everything that's constant to the right, everything that's not constant to the left, and then set those two ratios equal to each other that you find on the left side of your equation after you put everything that's constant on the right side of the equation. So in this case, P1 V1 T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And they want to know the final pressure. So the final pressure is P2. So let me, here's my red pen. So since we're looking for P2, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to rearrange that equation now for P2, which means T2 is going to go up here, V2 is going to come down here. I'm going to switch the equation around, so end up with P2 is equal to the left side, which is P1 V1 over T1, times T2, which now goes in the numerator, and divided by V2, which now goes in the denominator. So I just have to plug those numbers in. Now notice what we were given. We were given non-standard units. We were given pounds per square inch. We were given liters. We were given degrees centigrade. In some cases, we do not need to convert because the units will cancel out anywhere. In some cases, we do have to be careful. So let's take it one step at a time. First of all, pressure 1. Okay? Pressure 1 was given to us in pounds per square inch, but it was probably gauge pressure. So they gave us 40 pounds per square inch, which is gauge pressure, which is not total pressure. So to find the total pressure in the gas, we have to add atmospheric pressure. So that means pressure total is equal to gauge pressure. And I think I spelled that wrong. It's AU. So A times U, gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. So in this case, that would be 40 pounds per square inch plus 14.7 pounds per square inch. So we have to add atmospheric pressure to that. So this gives us 54.7 pounds per square inch. Always, 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 when you use the ideal gas equation, you must put in the total pressure, not just the gauge pressure. So P1 will be 54.7 pounds per square inch. And if we leave it in these units, that's okay. We'll get our answer in terms of pounds per square inch. So that's quite all right. Volume 1. We're given to us in liters, and volume 2 is given to us in liters as well. Since that will cancel out because we have volume 1 divided by volume 2, we do not need to convert that. So we can go ahead and write 48 liters. And now we have temperature 2. Again, when it comes to the ideal gas equation, we always have to convert, and I mean always have to convert temperature to the total temperature in Kelvin. So we were given the initial temperature as 25 degrees centigrade, Add that to 273, so temperature in Kelvin is equal to 25 plus 273, and of course that's all in Kelvin, and that would be 298 Kelvin. All right, so that's the initial temperature in Kelvin. We put down 298 Kelvin. We divide that now by the final temperature, 
and the final temperature is 80 degrees centigrade converted to Kelvin. So temperature in Kelvin is equal to 80 plus 273 Kelvin, which is equal to 353 Kelvin. So we go ahead and put that in here as 353 Kelvin. And finally, final volume, 49 liters. There we do not need to convert because here we realize that liters cancels out, so that's okay. It's just simply a ratio. And whoa, whoa, I got something wrong here. See, I got a number that didn't make sense, and I all of a sudden I realized T2, that's a final temperature, not the initial. So 353 goes up here and 298 goes up here. So I did that wrong. So again, for my temperatures, the final temperature is 353. The initial temperature is 298. Let me see if I got everything else right. Initial pressure is correct. Initial volume is correct. Final volume is correct. Okay, so we got to be careful about our subscript. So let's do this again. 54.7 times 48 times 353 divided by 298 divided by 49 equals 63.5. Hmm, here's my plan. So this is equal to 63.5 pounds per square inch. But notice that is the total pressure. If we want to go back to the gauge pressure, we have to subtract from that 14.7 pounds per square inch. And so total pressure minus atmospheric pressure gives us gauge pressure. So 15 minus 7 is 8. 12 minus 4 is 8. And that would be um, 5 minus 1 is 4. So 48.8 pounds per square inch. So that would be the new gauge pressure in the tire when we started out at, let's see, what was it? 40 pounds per square inch, we ended up at 48.8 pounds per square inch. So there's an idea for you. Let's say you go driving in the desert. You know it's gonna be very hot. You know that after driving, the tires heat up, especially from the hot road. The pressure in the tires will go up quite a bit. So you don't wanna to put too much pressure in the tires starting out so that when the, the driving takes place, the tires don't get to the point where there's too much pressure and it becomes unsafe and they could potentially blow out. But the most important part of it is here is learning how to use the gas equation. And so again, put all the constants to one side, all the variables to the other side. Now you have a ratio that means the initial condition equals the final condition according to that ratio. Identify the variable you're looking for. Rearrange the equation where you put everything else on one side, the variable you're looking for on the other side. I like to have the equation turn around with the variable looking for on the left. Plug everything in. Remember, on the pressure, you want to make sure you put in the total pressure, not just the gauge pressure. In the temperature, make sure you use Kelvin and not centigrade degrees. The volume ratio didn't matter what the units there were because the units canceled out. And then at the end, that's indeed the total pressure in the tire. But if you want us to track the atmospheric pressure, get gauge pressure, that's how you do that. And that's how we use the equation PV equals NRT.